Welcome back to Book Break. In today's episode, we are featuring a very exciting celeb author, Tomi Adeyemi, the author of this amazing YA fantasy that has just taken the world by storm, Children of Blood and Bone. There's a movie on the way, two more sequels to follow, even Jimmy Fallon picked this book for his first summer book club. So for this episode of Book Break, I invited the two incredible women behind the Black Girls Book Club to come and talk to Tomi about her wonderful imagination, the importance of representation, and of course her dream casting for the film. The Black Girls Book Club was set up by two book-loving friends, Natalie and Melissa, and it's a really great safe space for black women to get together and talk about books and just drink and chat and make friends. So I'll link to their Twitter and their website below so you can see what great events they've got coming up soon. So let's head over to Drink Shop Do to get these three wonderful women together. Hi, I'm Natalie, I'm the co-founder of Black Girls Book Club. And I'm Melissa, I'm the co-founder of Black Girls Book Club. And Adam, tell me. We all know who you are. <laughs> we know who you are. <laughs> so should we just get right into it? Yes. How did you come up with this amazing book and the stories within it? So I was in Brazil and I was actually there on a grant from university to study Brazil's history of the slave trade. And I passed these tiles and they have painted artwork on them. And that's where I saw the Orisha for the first time, this like, dark black man like engulfed in flames and breathing fire and I saw this like beautiful dark goddess so I knew I was gonna do something with that and then one day while I was at the job I saw this picture of this black girl with, like luminescent green hair and it really just exploded from there but I think the the common thread is just seeing magical black art for the yes. first time just that little exposure <laughs> it's it's like 600 pages so I think that you know when we talk a lot about why representation mm. matters and things like that it's like your imagination is literally limited by what yeah. you cannot see yeah, exactly. yeah. and so I could never I never even thought there could be a black god or goddess you know when I meet little girls especially here because they're so cute with their accents <laughs> and they're just like Miss Tommy I just want to let you know like I'm going to tell my story now and I'm like, you tell your story, you little queens. <laughs> I'm so excited for the film. Yeah. yeah. If you could cast anybody, like, who, yeah. who would you cast? I'll be excited no matter what. When I was writing King Saran's character, I had Idris Elba's <laughs> That's what we said. That's what we said. Obviously, sequel. Like, yes. can you tell us? Can you give me a date? Can I pre-order? Like, yes. yes. Okay, so the sequel is called Children of Virtue and Vengeance. You can pre-order. Oh, right. I am working on it. So with Black Girls Book Club, we mainly focus on black female authors. So how important was it for you to have a black female protagonist as the star yeah. of your book? It was extremely important. The Hunger Games adaptation came out and everyone was complaining that like, oh, yeah. well not everyone, but yeah. a very vocal segment mm. of the ignorant internet was like, oh, why are all the good characters black? It wasn't sad when Rue died because she was black. Like, that was heartbreaking yeah. to me. Because it's like the fact that you could literally see this like beautiful little girl get speared in the gut and say it's not sad because of the color of her skin is, you know, it really showed me where the world was. I get like heartbroken, you know, I cry, then I get angry, then I get even. I play the long game. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna make something that's so good and so black that even races are gonna have to see it. <laughs> have to yeah, you know, because they don't like to be left out. So that was my plan. <laughs> you know, when Hermione was cast here as black and everyone was freaking out. And first I was very angry about that. And I was like, you can have ogres, and you can have invisibility mm. cloaks, and you can have dragons, it's but a magic black world. witch, no. Uh, yeah. But then it's I realized, how many times have we all seen ogres? If you don't have a character like that that you can identify with, then it's always gonna seem like this crazy, I understand dragons, I don't understand black people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I used to be just very angry about it, but then when you take it back to literally just psychology, it's like, I can name you 10 books with dragons. I can't name you 10 fantasies with black people. I can name you three and they all came out this year. When I read this, I realized this is what I needed. Yeah. Was like, what I needed I was thinking this. that as well. Yeah. Like, I if I had this. that when I was 16, like, how much more excited I would have felt about myself. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has something that the world tells them to hate about themselves. Yeah, that's true. And, you, and a lot of times we spend years, if not decades, hating this thing about ourselves that actually makes us magical, that actually makes us beautiful. You're not gonna overwrite 
decades of being trained one way yeah. Yeah. in a just, day just or in a month hair. or even in a year. We also try and hide our hair. I hadn't worn my fro out maybe since I was a, like three yeah. years old. I took it out one day and I was trying to go to work. And so I was staring at myself. I was like, is this okay? Is this okay? Is this unprofessional? I took 20 minutes to hype myself up to wear my natural hair to work and I couldn't do it. And then I remember I would go into the like kitchen that morning and this girl walks in with blue hair. Not a care in the world. Yeah. And I was like, what? You know? And I realized, I was like, oh, no. You know, much I use swear words. I've never seen a fro in the back of a book. Yeah, sure. And not a fro, not a braid out, not a yeah, twist out. A fro. But like, this is how my hair grows out of my head. And I knew for a lot of little girls, it would mean, you know, like, especially if you're just, even if you just pick it up in the bookstore and see that, it's like, what? Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, it's okay. The hair that grows out of my head is okay, but it's like when you don't see it, you don't know. Tony, so, I mean, we just want to say we love you. I know all of the Black Girls Book Clubs are probably watching this right now and just like screaming. Yeah. This book means the world oh, to us. all of us. It's so, 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 so important. I just want to thank you for like, coming today and for giving us this book. It's been an honor to have you. Yes. And thank you very much. And we're so excited to see the film to read the sequel and hopefully meet you again. Yes. And email you our costumes. Yes. 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 Your vision. <laughs> our vision. Our vision. I hope you liked watching their conversation as much as I did and do give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. And of course, hit that subscribe button below because we post new videos every week. Next week we are off to Summer in the City and our video might even feature some of you. See you next time.